So we're still adding and subtracting fractions that have unlike denominators. Now the last couple times we've done this, when we've added and subtracted, we've noticed that we could get to the other denominator fairly simply. Here, I'm looking at 2 fifths plus 1 eighth. Looking at those denominators, 5 and 8. I can't count by 5 and get to 8, and I can't count by 8 and get to 5. So what I have to do is find what we call the least common multiple. To do that, I'm going to count by 5's. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Then I'm also going to count by 8's. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, and 80. And now that I've counted by 5's and 8's, I'm going to look for what factors or what multiples do 5 and 8 have in common. Well, the one I see on this particular list is... 40. Okay. 5 and 8 have 40 in common as a multiple. We call this the least common multiple. So we would say the least common multiple of 5 and 8 is 40. Well, we can use the least common multiple then to make the least common denominator so that we can add and subtract our fractions. We can only add and subtract fractions when the denominators are the same. So I'm going to be thinking about, hmm, what do I multiply 5 by that's going to get me a denominator of 40? Well, hmm, 5 times 8 is 40. So my fraction equal to 1, because I'm just changing the value, or changing the name, not changing the value of my fraction. It's going to be 8 over 8. So 2 fifths gets renamed 16 fortieths. Same value, new name. I need the same denominator, denominator 40, to change the name of 1 eighth. 8 times what gives me 40? That's 5, so my fraction equal to 1 is 5 fifths. 1 times 5 is 5. So 1 eighth gets renamed 5 fortieths. Then I just add my numerators. 16 plus 5 is 21. My denominators stay the same, 21 fortieths. So I'm using the least common multiple to make the least common denominator so that I have like fractions, fractions that have the same denominator, so I can add and subtract. Now let's look at subtracting using the least common multiple as well. So I've got 5 sixths minus 3 eighths. I can't count by 6 and get to 8, and I can't count by 8 and get to 6, so I'm going to have to count by 6 and count by 8, then find that number, that multiple that they have in common that's the smallest one, so I can rename my fractions with like denominators and then subtract. So counting by 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54 and 60, all right, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, and 80 is what I get when I count by 8. Looking for what 6 and 8 have in common. I see 24 is in common. Keep looking. I also see 48 is in common. But I'm looking for the least common multiple. That means the smallest number they have in common. So the least common multiple of 6 and 8 is 24. So I can use 24 as the new common denominator for 5, 6, and 3 eighths when I rename those fractions so that I can subtract them. So let's go ahead and do that. So 
So I know I'm going to multiply 5 sixths and 3 eighths times some fraction equal to 1. Just to rename it doesn't change its value, only changes its name when I multiply by 1. So that I have the common denominator of 24. 6 times what gives me 24? Well, 6 times 4 does, so my fraction equal to 1 is 4 fourths. 5 times 4 is 20. So 5 sixths gets renamed 20 20 fourths. 3 eighths times what times 8 gets is 24? Well, that's 3. So my fraction equal to 1 is 3 thirds. Whatever happens to the denominator, I have to also do it to the numerator. 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 eighths gets renamed 9 20 fourths. 20 minus 9. 11 20 fourths when I subtract. So I'm using the least common multiple to become the least common denominator. So I have a common denominator when I subtract and add fractions. I want to look at another problem. I've got 1 half plus 4 sevenths. Again, I'm going to have to use the least common multiple to find my common denominator so I can add these two because I can't count by 2 and make it to 7, and I can't count by 7's and get to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and count by 2's. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Then I'm going to count by 7's. 7, 21. Well, nope, that's wrong. Then I'm going to count by sevens. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, and 70. Then I'm going to look for what they have in common. I can see here that the least common multiple of 7 and 4, or 7 and 2, is 14. The least common multiple of 7 and 2 is 14. So 14 is going to become the new denominator for both of these fractions that I'm going to add. So, I'm thinking about this, well, hmm, I'm going to multiply 1 half times 7 sevenths, because 2 times 7 gives me 14, so I get 7 fourteenths when I rename 1 half. I'm going to multiply 4 sevenths by 2 over 2, so I'm going to get 8 fourteenths when I rename 4 sevenths, and then I'm going to go ahead and just add. 7 plus 8 is 15, and my denominator stays the same, so I have 15 fourteenths. Now, this is unusual. The numerator here is larger than the denominator. That means that this fraction is more than one. It's larger than one whole. We call this an improper fraction. Anytime the numerator is larger than the denominator, we have an improper fraction. 15 fourteenths really is kind of like saying 14 fourteenths plus 1 fourteenth. Well, we know that 14 fourteenths is the same as 1 whole. So 15 fourteenths could be said 1 and 1 fourteenth. And we call this simplifying the improper fraction. And we get a result that we call a mixed number. A mixed number is a whole number and a fraction. Another way that we can look at 15 fourteenths is the division problem. Remember we said fractions represent division. So 15 divided by 14. Well, 14 will go into 15 one time. 1 times 14 is 14. 15 minus 14 is 1. When I make my remainder, I get 1 and 1 14th, the same thing. Again, simplifying the improper fraction to get a mixed number answer.
When we add, sometimes we're going to add fractions and we're going to get more than one whole and we'll need to make a mixed number answer.